Well, welcome to the family uh, in this small and unique gathering that we have here today. Um, we're excited to be able to do this, to be together um, in these strange days uh, where that's a limited thing because of COVID-19. Um, we are video recording this today so that others who aren't able to be here but had a wonderful love for Rodney can uh, in some way be a part of this and uh, honoring him. I don't think any of us anticipated being here today, uh, certainly not this quickly. Um, uh, it's uh, hard to even know how to um, address those issues that we're facing. Uh, but today we're not here to do that. We're here to honor the life that Rodney Frank Schultz lived. Uh, it was just last July 1st that we were here in remembering Bev and celebrating her life. And uh, as I reflect back on these last months, I think for Rodney, uh, the health issues that he faced were significant. And being private, he kept a lot of that to himself. Um, but I think it was as much a broken heart as anything else. That he missed Bev. <laughs> and we all did. But we turn to our hope that is found in the scriptures, right? In Psalm 62, 5 through 6 says this, Find rest. O oh, my soul, in God alone, my hope comes from Him. He alone is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress, and I will not be shaken. Well, in these moments as we share memories, as we sing hymns that were so familiar to Rod and Bev, we remember that Christ is our rock. Because the pain and the struggle and the grief is real, and that's okay. But the rock never changes. Our living hope in Christ never changes. Because He never changes. Well, would you bow with me as we do a prayer of invocation together? Heavenly Father, we bow before you amid our sorrow and mourning for the loss of our dear friend, Rodney Frank Schultz. We come before you with great anticipation for what Rod is already experiencing in the presence of your glory. We desire your peace through the power of your Holy Spirit. Would you use these memories that are shared and the truths of your scripture to provide us with a living hope and to bring you glory. We pray these things in the matchless name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, music was a big part of certainly Bev and Rod together. Um, so we have a couple of hymns that um, we're going to do via video today uh, to help keep our numbers down. So let's sing together, shall we? Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on, let me stand. I am tired, I am weak, I am worn. Through the storm, through the night, lead me on to Precious Lord, and lead me home. 
programs, we're going to look at the obituary for Rodney. <clears throat> and, uh, we're not going to sing that song again, though. <laughs> as good as it was. <clears throat> Rodney Frank Schultz was born on May 8th in 1938. In Eden Lake Township in Stearns County, Minnesota, he was the son of Alvin Schultz and Edna Leesman Schultz. Rodney grew up on the family farm outside of Painesville. He was baptized as an infant, later confirmed at Ebenezer Church in Painesville. Rodney went to school and graduated from the Painesville High School in 1956. June 18th of 1960, Rodney was united in marriage to Beverly Ann Rood at the East Irving Mission Church. Rodney entered active military service in the United States Army in 1961, served his country during peacetime until 1964. While in the service, Rodney and Bev made their home in Virginia. Rodney later had careers including working in warehousing in Painesville, driving truck in St. Cloud, working at HVAC control systems at Thermal King in Minneapolis, and Johnson Controls in Phoenix, Arizona. After retirement, Rod and Bev moved back to Painesville. They enjoyed time spent with family, playing cards, fishing, and visiting. They were active members of the Painesville Evangelical Free Church, where Rodney especially enjoyed serving as their head usher. And uh, for those who weren't here, he is wearing his usher pin in the casket. <laughs> it gave Rod great joy to volunteer, giving Sunday school children rides in his John Deere tractor trailer, to see the sheep at his in-laws' farms, and to pull youngsters in many of the parades in surrounding areas. Uh, Rodney also had a passion for serving in the veterans uh, community and in his community he spent many hours caring for others by serving meals, driving them to and from their medical appointments. Rodney passed away on Thursday, April 9th of 2020 at the Glen Oaks Senior Living Campus in New London, Minnesota at the age of 81. Blessed be his memory. You're aware of each of those family members who are there. I'm not going to read through those and list those because some of us are sitting right here. Um, it was seven years ago, March 3rd, that I walked through those doors for the first time. And the sharp young man in a suit with an usher pin walked up and stuck out his hand. And he said, hi, I'm Rodney Schultz. And he was so proud of this church. And so excited to show off the, the building and, and introduce me to people that were here. And uh, there's a saying in ministry as you come to a new church that you should always be wary of the first hand that's extended to you. That was not the case with Rodney. There couldn't have been a more genuine uh, expression of uh, love for his church and for the people in this church. As I was reflecting on some of those things about Rodney, I, Sitting at my desk earlier today, I thought, oh, i got to run out and check. Because right at the door where he would stand, later in the years, he would struggle a little bit with names, right? And so he had this little narrow piece of paper that I don't know how he could see it. He would jot down people's names, and then he kind of wedged it in the door frame there. So as he was standing to hand out bulletins, he would glance at the names, and then he would greet people by name. Uh... It seemed the first few months I was here trying to get my bearings, I, I, uh, Sunday mornings were a little crazy. And uh, behind us is the cross, and that cross has a light behind it. And uh, I would always forget to turn on that light. And when Rodney would get here early before service, he would come down and make sure that the offering plates were where they were supposed to be. And then he'd walk over to that closet and he'd open the door and he'd flip the light on to the cross. And then he'd kind of look at me. And I'll never forget the first Sunday that I remembered to turn on the light. And Rodney checked the plates and he looked back at the cross and the light was on and he just looked at me and gave me one of these. And then he gave me a thumbs up. It was those kind of relational things that just made Rodney so special. I have lots of memories of Rod and Bev mowing lawn and watering trees and ushering, serving in so many ways. As we read earlier, he's been so involved in our community and serving the senior adults and giving rides and, and being part of the Green Roof uh, Senior Center. Uh, 
And I know that you guys have a lot of memories as well. I've asked both Keith and Greg to share uh, just a few memories this morning, uh, this afternoon as we're together. So would you guys come on up and, and share? Good afternoon. Uh, I'm Rodney's nephew from his brother Ron. My name is Greg Schultz. Um, some of the, growing up, some of my first recollections of Rod, and you can't mention Rod without mentioning Bev at this time, but Rod and Bev was that, they lived in Bloomington, Bloomington, Minnesota, and I grew up in Grove City. So Bloomington compared to Grove City is a, quite a difference in contrast between Grove City and, and the big city of Bloomington, Minnesota, so. So the first thing I remember is we'd go over to their house in Bloomington, they had these big jets that would go over the place because they lived fairly close to the airport. The jets would be so loud, you'd have to yell at each other to kind of talk to each other, especially if you're outside at times. And so that's one of the memories that I have for sure. And, uh, and also being that they're in the Metropolitan, they had, a, they had a TV that had a remote control. So I remember that, uh, I still remember that sound of this day, it would go ka-chunk, 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 and I'm sure, I think I got reprimanded a time or two by grabbing that control and just trying to wear the battery out because it was very foreign to me. That was one of the things I had a memory of them. And they also had a car that had power windows. But one of the biggest memories I have is they had a cat named Tina. I don't know if many of you remember Tina the cat, the Siamese cat. And that cat would hiss at you and hide in the closet and, and Rod and Bev would both say that don't get too close or it'll bite you. It'll be your fault because you got too close to it. And I remember those memories of Bloomington very well. And also one of the big um, field trips we do when we're down in the cities at their point is we would uh, go to the airport back before there was TSA and we could watch airplanes at the observation tower there. That was one of the big memories for them. Um, when they moved to Arizona, we, I got to visit them when I was, believe, in high school, like a sophomore, junior year in high school, we went down and visited them. And then we got to see uh, the Arizona where they lived in the, in the mobile home park and that, and had a lot of memories with that. Seeing the Arizona landscape with them and this and that. And uh, they're always very welcoming, always very loving, always making you feel like you were really part of their family when you were visiting them. And I also got to visit them again. When I got out of the Navy, I spent a week with them on my way home um, from San Diego to Minneapolis. And, they, and we also did a few more things there in Arizona with them as well. When they got back to, uh, to Minnesota, um, then we, we saw them more and more often because they were in the States, or they were in Minneapolis, or they were here in Painesville. And, and uh, so we got to see them more often on birthdays, holidays, things like that. We had a few meals with them down in the cities, things like that. Um, so we were very uh, welcome with that. Um, one of the things that Rodney is very proud of is he worked for the Rose Center, as Brad had mentioned. He brought people to medical appointments, um, VA appointments, things like that. And he was very, very proud of that. Um, one of the things that he would do when he'd come to appointments in Litchfield, and I was working in Litchfield at the time, is he would uh, make it a point to um, try to stop in where I was working. I worked at a couple different places in Litchfield at the time. And he uh, would call quite often, or he'd just show up at the at the plant I was working at, or at the facility I was working at. And he'd just show up at the reception at his desk, and before you knew it, pretty much the whole entire plant or where I was working at would knew him as my uncle Rod, as he was very welcoming, as Brad had mentioned, and he'd greet people um, just like he was a uh, he was one part of the workforce after a while. Um, and I don't think he fully understood or he quite comprehended when I was working at a food plant in Litchfield why he couldn't go just barging into the plant to see me because he was a relative of mine and he figured he could just walk right in and say, hey, what's going on? Let's go for lunch or this and that. He never did quite grasp the whole biosecurity um, thing of food safety and this and that. So I think he always did struggle with that even up until the end. Um, one. Uh, and one of the things, and that's how welcoming he was, and he got to be. Um, one of the memories I have of, was with a couple of my nieces, Shelby and Greta, Pam's kids. They are about to play a basketball game at Painesville, a varsity game, and Rodney um, 
they're doing their warm-ups before the game, and Rodney just kind of steps onto the court, just kind of goes up to him and just shakes their hands. Just so they're doing their warm-ups, and he just, that's just kind of the way he was. If you, if you knew Rodney, and if he knew you, he was going to welcome you, no matter what. Didn't matter if you were getting ready for a big varsity or basketball game or what, that's what he would do. And that's one of the finest memories I have of him, you know, how welcoming he always was. Um, yeah. If you were family with him, you were, you were, or even friends with him, you were part of his family. So, um, we get towards the end here. When, after Bev had died last summer, as Brad mentioned, Rodney really did struggle with her being gone. Um, I noticed it, the family noticed it. I think we all noticed it tremendously. Um, and then, like, even though he had blood cancer, he was diagnosed in the fall, I think, uh, as Brad had mentioned, the last six months, I think, was a, was a man with a, with a broken heart. It truly was a broken heart. And in the midst of his brokenness, I think uh, we had some of the most important conversations that me and him had personally together. Um, and these conversations were not so much of this world, but of the world um, to come after his life was over. And he knew, for some reason, he, that he didn't have much time on earth. And uh, he knew that, which was much to my disagreement at times with him. But he, he just knew, and he was very adamant about it. He didn't have long left, left to live on this earth. Um, but he would often comment on what he had read in what he called the good book, and that's the Bible. So I've been reading in the good book today, and this is what he'd comment on in the Bible, and we talk about that. And he'd talk about his salvation and his faith through Jesus Christ, which is very important. It's the most important thing we have in our lives. So those conversations have always hold, always hold them precious to me. So with that, um, you know, Rodney was looking forward to his home in heaven long before myself and probably others, you others here in this room, were possibly thinking he was going to go. Um, but those conversations I can look forward to a reunion with Rodney as well as many others we'll have someday in our presence, in the presence of our Creator in heaven. So, uh, Rodney, thanks for the memories and may you rest in peace with our Heavenly Father forever. So, all right. Light, who was one of uh, Rod's nephews, um, some of my earlier uh, recollections were uh, opening day of fishing. Um, Dad, myself, and, and Rod would go out and we'd go over to Rice Lake and troll for a few northerns. Um, I'm not much of a fisherman, but uh, all I can remember of opening day of fishing is sitting there and having a snow drift across my legs and thinking, hmm, <laughs> is this really fun? But um, probably the next, next was uh, when uh, us kids were, were well, the girls were probably school age, and, and um, I was out of school, but uh, we started church softball. And, um, and through that, through the many years, when, when Bev and Rod had came, came back and, and grandparents were, were there, parents were there, and, and Bev and Rod were usually always there too, you know, and, and uh, they enjoyed watching the, the youth, um, you know, just being involved in their lives, and, and that, that was huge. Um, you know, and one of the other things is, is uh, when I was visiting, um, he, uh, he and Bev had a, a, a picture of, of Jacob um, in his military uh, uniform and, and Ben um, in his, and, and, you know, he was excited to talk about that. And I think that goes to uh, uh, where he'd helped out as far as with... Um, with taking people to the VA and, and sharing in that part and, and having those the conversations with just driving down there, but he was a, he was a people person on that. Um, my mom was a Sunday school teacher for many years, and she had uh, real little ones. And uh, with Dad, when he retired, he had a few head of sheep, and so spring of the year, he always had lambs. And Mom started inviting the, the kids out, you know, so they'd take, you know, a class of five to maybe eight kids out to the, out to the farm to show them the lambs, and thought that was kind of cool. 
And well, when dad wasn't, wasn't doing the sheep anymore, I thought, well, okay, now, now what do we do? Do we, do we just drop that? And I was talking with Rod. Of course, he had his, his 65 110 that was all fixed up with the trailer behind it. And, and uh, so he said, well, I could, I could bring my tractor and trailer out. We could kind of give them hay rides because I said, well, Paul will have some, some juice and cookies for them at the house. And then we can bring them up to the barn and they can see the lambs and kind of play in the hay if they want to, however it works out. Well, that was really a big hit, but I said, Rod had volunteered to, hey, why don't I bring that out? So he would load it up, bring it out there, and we'd get set up, and, and it was just a, a neat thing and an outreach, you know, as far as with the kids. So right, one, of the, one of the other things, and I think you, you know, as far as talking, our oldest son and his family are over in the Milwaukee area, which uh, over in Eagles, so it's six and a half, seven hours from here. But so if we go out there, we usually take an extra day. So probably go out on a Friday and come back on a Monday. And Rod, or sometimes it was Bev that volunteered Rod. You know, if Rod was a little bucky, uh, Bev would say, oh, Rod will do it. So uh, he would take care of my chores, you know, which was, which was very appreciative, you know, and, and going through on that. So um, about the only thing with that, um, I do have a, have a dog, and when I'd come home, that dog would be spoiled rotten because, I mean, he had treats and all kinds of things that Rod would be spoiling him with and, and going from there. But... But the last thing that I, that I really have is the suit, because usually I'm not wearing a suit as far as in church, as I see Pastor Brad. But one of the, Rod's biggest items was, boy, the pastor doesn't have a suit on today, you know, or, you know, people. So I, says, I told Paul, I said, no, I said, I'm wearing a suit today, you know, and so that's in honor of, of Rod. And, and there again, I says, uh, we just really appreciate those memories, and there's a lot more memories, and, and, uh, and yet we really ap appreciate uh, the nursing staff, you know, whether it be Painesville Hospital, VA Hospital, Glen Oaks, um, they were great. And I says, we never heard, heard anything. Um, you know, I had the chance to, to serve as power of attorney for Rod, and, and so I would have been the one that would have heard that, and yet when I called, I said things were good on that. But uh, looking out as a celebration of life, and I'm seeing an empty church, and I'm like, or just about empty, and I'm thinking, boy, you know, if the COVID-19 wouldn't be here, there would be a whole lot more people. But we really appreciate Rod, and Rod, we appreciate the memories. Yeah, there was no question to wear a suit today. And that was uh, an honoring of Rodney. Um, I agree with Keith that this church would be packed if we had that option today. I know that. Um, we, could, we could easily say what a friend we have in Rodney, right? And uh, yet he would want us to sing what a friend we have in Jesus. So uh, let's do that together. Never be discouraged Take 
give to the Lord in prayer? Can we find a friend so faithful who will all our sorrow share? Jesus knows our every weakness. Take it to the Lord in where our solace is found, right? In Christ and Christ alone. Uh, I should warn you as we turn to the scriptures, it's been over a month since I've been able to preach to real people. So hold on. <laughs> I'm excited. Excited to just look at God's word together. Um, wonderful passage in Ephesians give us such hope and clarity. Uh, starting in verse 4, in the heading in my Bible, it says, Made alive in Christ. But because of his great love for us, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in our transgressions. It is by grace that you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Jesus Christ in order that in the coming ages he might show his incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Jesus Christ. For it is by grace that you have been saved through faith. This is not from yourself, it is a gift from God, and it's not by works so that no one can boast. For we are God's workmanship, created for uh, in Christ to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. I love how four begins, because of his great love for us. It's because God loved us, not that we loved Him, right? He is the one that reaches down to us first. I know that God's love for Rodney was great. His love for Rodney was so great that He sent His one and only Son to die on a cross. It was God's great mercy that gave Rod life. Rod was made alive in Christ even when he was dead in his own sin. As much as he is for you and I in that exact same way. I love how verse 5 kind of tags before it goes into 8 and it says, For it is by grace that you are saved. I think Paul as an author is wanting us to really grasp that even before he states it so clearly once again in 8. It is by grace that you're saved. See, Rod was a great guy. <laughs> None of us would deny that, right? 
We loved him dearly. But Rodney could not hand out enough bulletins to make God happy. Rod could not have given enough rides to people to appointments to please God enough to cover his sin, right? To conquer the sin that was part of Rodney's life as much as it is a part of my life and your life. See, verse 6 tells us it was God who raised Rodney up in Christ. It's because of what Christ did. We just celebrated Easter and a, and a resurrected Christ who died on a cross for our sins, who shed his blood as payment, because we can't. We can't do that. Only Christ could do that. What a beautiful picture that the Apostle Paul paints for us to be raised with Christ in the heavenly realms and seated with him. I, I couldn't help as I got that text on Thursday night to know that he had passed, to think, what is he experiencing right now? Rod is in the presence of Christ. The Bible promises us that when we're absent from the body, we're present with the Lord. And for those of us that visited him Thursday, that, that's not pretty. It's tough. His physical struggle for breath and for life was, was painful. But what a joy to know that in that instant that he left that body, that he was in the presence of Jesus Christ. Experience these, these glorious riches that Paul's explaining to us. He was raised up to express the incomparable riches of his grace in the kindness of Christ. 1 Peter 1, 3 talks about the living hope that we have through the resurrection of Jesus. That's where our hope is found. Well, Ephesians 2, 8 is the critical verse for us to grasp in this life. For it is by grace that you have been saved through faith. It's not from yourselves. It is a gift from God, not by works, so that nobody can boast. You know that Rod was private. Bev were, was private with their lives. There were things that they, that they were just personal and, and kept to themselves. Um, I want to share with you something that I experienced with Rod in our friendship and relationship. It was several years back, I got a phone call from Rod, and I could tell he was distressed. He said, Pastor, can I, are you at church? I said, yeah, I'm, I'm here. He said, can I come out and see you? I said, yeah, absolutely. He said, I'm not coming in. He said, can you meet me in the parking lot? And I said, sure. You know, if, after being in ministry for a while, you learn those things happen and you just roll with that, right? I didn't know what was happening. I didn't know what was going on. But I could tell it's that little black pickup pulled up in the parking lot and the window went down and there were tears in Rod's eyes that he was hurting. He was struggling. This is years ago. And I said, Rod, what's going on, man? What's going on? He said, Pastor, I got to tell you something. I said, what? He said, I'm not a Christian. I said, Rod, what, what does that mean? What does that mean to you? He said, ah, I just go through the motions. He said, my whole life I've just, I've been in church, I've, I've done all the things I'm supposed to do, but he goes, I've never bowed the knee. I've never uh, acknowledged Christ as my Lord and Savior. I said, wow, Rod. I said, that, that's shocking to me. That's kind of surprising. But he was as clear and as certain as anybody had ever talked to about it. I said, so, Rod, are you a sinner? He said, yeah, yeah, I am. I said, well, who's Jesus to you? He said, well, he's God's son. I said, does he love you? He said, yep. I said, well, did he die on the cross to forgive sin? He said, yep. I said, so what are you missing? And he said, I've just never asked him to be my Lord. I said, well, here's the thing, Rod. Bev can't do that for you. I said, your brothers and sisters can't do that for you. I said, I can't do that for you. I said, that's only something you can do with God. And I don't know why, but I just felt led. And I said, Rod, so I'm going to leave you right here by yourself. And I said, I want you to take care of that work with the Lord. I said, you don't need me to do it. And I walked away. 
The next few times we got together, Rod didn't really want to talk about it. He didn't want to go there. And it had been years since we'd had a conversation to follow up with that. Until Bev had passed. And Rodney called me in that same tone, in that same way one day. And he said, Pastor, are you at church? I said, yep, I am. He said, can I come see you? I said, absolutely. He said, I'll be in your office in just a minute. And he came racing over. And I said, you know, Rod, I said, we've been through a lot these last few years together. And I said, but I never have asked you, did you do that work with the Lord that you needed to do? And he began to weep. <laughs> he began to weep in my office. And he said, I haven't. And I was just like, Rod, what are you waiting for? He said, I don't know. I said, Rod, let me read you a verse in Romans chapter 10, verse 9. It says this, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you confess and are saved. And I looked up at him, and it was quiet for a minute, and he goes, read it again. So I read it again. I said, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And you could see him looking around and he goes, read it again. I bet I read that verse five times to him. And all of a sudden, I looked up and Rodney, with his head bowed, began to pray like I have never heard anybody pray. He asked for forgiveness. He asked for God's mercy and grace, and he said, I believe. And when he finished, and we cried together, I said, Ronnie, let me grab a Bible off my shelf, and I'm going to write this date in this Bible so that you don't ever have to wonder again if you're good enough. Because you know now, you're not. You're not good enough. Only Jesus is good enough. Your job is to believe and to trust in Him. I'll be honest with you, 17 and a half years of ministry, that is a highlight for me. That is one of the greatest days I've ever had. So I think about the glorious riches that He is experiencing right now in the presence of God because he had faith and he believed. Acts 4.12 says, Salvation is found in no one else. There is no other name under heaven given to men by which we are saved. I know that was always a struggle for Rod, that he wasn't good enough for salvation. What a joy to see that he wasn't and that we aren't. But Christ is May you and I trust in the promises of God's word and find our living hope in Christ Jesus alone. Well, another song that meant so much to them was Eagle's Wings. It's on the front of our brochures, our pamphlets, and uh, let's sing together with this video. you 
shine like the sun and hold you in the palm of his hand. The snare of the fowler will never capture you, and famine will. Well, for the few of us that are here, let's uh, affirm our faith in praying the Lord's Prayer as He taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Well, shortly we will uh, leave this place and meet up together at the graveside and um, go through that ceremony together. Unfortunately, we won't have a lunch together or uh, those kinds of events today, but uh, that doesn't mean we can't continue to support one another and encourage each other in phone calls and texts and uh, sharing this video with extended family. So um, let's close with a, a prayer of benediction. Would you bow with me? Lord God, we praise you and we thank you for this time together. Lord, as we remember and celebrate the earthly life of Rodney Frank Schultz, as well as the hope of his eternal life that is found in you and you alone. Lord, I thank you for your promises that have been proclaimed from the word, and I pray that each of us might have a faith and receive the gift of salvation that is found in Christ and Christ alone. And now to these dear family members who love Rod so much, may you bless them and keep them. May the Lord make his face to shine upon them and be gracious to them. Lord, may you turn your face toward them and give them peace. Amen. Amen.